Silver Doctors is taking gold, silver, and finance news to the next level. In addition to the once-weekly SD Weekly Metals and Markets Wrap, Silver Doctors will be producing daily podcasts with top financial experts and market makers in the gold and silver space. Joining the Silver Doctors team is Elijah Johnson from Finance and Liberty, who will be hosting these new interviews. But that's not all. Silver Doctors will also be posting some of the latest and greatest internet videos pertaining to finance, economics, and precious metals. If you aren't already a subscriber to the Silver Doctors YouTube channel, become one today for free and receive some of the best commentary in the precious metal space daily. SilverDoctors.com Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with SilverDoctors.com. Welcome to the Silver Doctors Daily Podcast. And with us today is John Embry, the Senior Advisor at Sprott Incorporated. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Elijah, it's my pleasure. All right. Well, I'd first like to discuss about one of your recent articles. You wrote an article titled The Fundamental Attraction of Gold, and you explain what has occurred in about the last 50 years that has brought the U.S. dollar on the brink of collapse, government debt to increase enormously, and why now U.S. investors seem to be starting at least to move towards gold. Now, you start by explaining the events that led up to the U.S. abandoning the gold standard. Can you explain what caused the U.S. to suspend the gold convertibility of the U.S. dollar? Well, that was a long time ago, and it was you know, right back to the 60s when Lyndon Johnson was president of the United States. And he basically put in a, you know, two policies, one to fight the Vietnam War. At the same time, he was you know, introducing the, uh, the great society with benefits for everybody, and essentially they overspent dramatically. And as a result, dollars were leaving the United States at a rapid rate, and they were going to the you know to foreign countries, and which they were being turned into the foreign central banks. And at that point in time, the only people that could convert U.S. dollars into gold were the central banks, and they started to do it at an increasing rate. And basically, the United States became extremely uncomfortable with this. And by in August of 1971. By that time, uh, there was a new president in, Nixon, and he basically removed the gold convertibility. And since that day, which is now, what, uh, some 45 years ago, we've had a totally pure fiat currency system in the entire world. Definitely. And you said that after the gold standard was destroyed, the Fed started expanding the money supply through stimulus programs. But right away, this actually did not cause a lot of inflation. Can you explain why? Well, that, that was really interesting. Volcker, when he was the Fed chairman at that point, crushed the inflationary psychology at the end of the 70s into the early 80s by rising, raising interest rates to an almost unbelievable today level of double digits. I think they might hit 15% briefly at one point. And this literally crushed the inflationary psychology. And it also created a fairly significant recession and to combat the recession after the inflationary psychology had been crushed, uh, they started printing money aggressively again. And it, instead of going into sort of everyday goods, it basically started to go into financial assets. And I mean, the bond market bottomed in 1981. The stock market bottomed in 1982 in the United States. And with the odd interruption, they've never looked back. I mean, the Dow's up today over 18-fold from where it was when this whole thing began in '82. Definitely. And it seems like we're, we've seen kind of the same situation today, you know, when the Federal Reserve has, with their quantitative easing programs, you know, expanded the money supply dramatically. But we're not seeing a whole lot of inflation because it seems like the money is, you know, we're seeing the stock market go up, but also just a lot of the money just seems to be you know, sitting on banks balance sheets and not really moving into the economy. I think this reflects the over indebtedness in the society and people aren't prepared to take on more debt. So consequently, the velocity of this high powered money the Fed is creating has fallen and what, where the money is going is into asset markets. And as you know, I mean, the bond market's absurdly overvalued. The stock market by any sort of historical measurement is overvalued. And with profits starting to fall now, it's becoming more overvalued by the day. And real estate in many markets is, uh, 
totally out of line with sort of the income in those markets. So yeah, I think it's a classic financial asset inflation on steroids now. Now, it's interesting you mentioned in the article, it's like, how long can this continue? I mean, that's a question you ask. You mentioned that the U.S. government debt has increased almost $20 trillion. And if we include all the unfunded liabilities, that is actually you say is anywhere from $85 trillion to $175 trillion. And if you factor in that the U.S. GDP is around $18 trillion, um, so basically there's four to eight times the amount of debt than our GDP. So asking the question that you asked in the article, now I'm going to ask it to you, how long do you see this is able to continue? Well, as long as the U.S. is the provides the world's reserve currency, which it has done since the end of the Second World War, and other people are prepared to take the U.S. dollar in payment for things, I guess this thing can continue. But I think we've reached such an alarming level of debt that any rise in interest rates, and they continually talk about interest rates going up, I think could very easily break the debt bubble. And when that happens, you'd better own precious metals and very little else. Now, moving to precious metals, you've said in the past that compared to the amount of debt in existence, precious metals, in your opinion, are cheaper than ever. Now, I know a lot of people say, you know, precious metals have risen a lot since the year 2000. But you say that relative to the amount of debt in existence, they're actually cheaper than ever. Can you expand on this? Well, that's my theory. And I mean, I've been following these markets since, well, since gold was $35. And I don't think gold is any more expensive in relation to sort of financial assets and the debt and what have you, money in the system, than it was when it was $35 an ounce. And, but the, today, I mean, the, the prospects of something going seriously wrong that can't be corrected uh, is enormously high. So on that premise alone, I think gold and silver have never been more attractive than they are today relative to financial assets. Now, what is your perspective on what what percentage of investors right now are moving into gold and other precious metals such as silver? And do you see this percentage rising in the future? Well, that's one of the key underpinnings to my sort of beliefs, and that is the fact that very few people own gold or silver. I mean, there's a few you know investors who long believed in the hard hard assets, and they're in there. But by and large, the average pension fund, insurance company, and average investor has zero exposure. And as a result, when this thing starts to move, there's so much money that can be converted from other assets that that's why I think the upside potential in both these metals is beyond most people's you know, comprehension. Now, you said that the move that we're going to see in the precious metals, the move that you're predicting, will basically dwarf the moves that we saw in the 70s and 80s bull market, the gold bull market in the 70s and 80s. Why, why do you believe that? Well, I just as I said, I think the conditions in the system now are far more dangerous for sort of traditional assets, bond stocks and real estate. Very few people are invested in gold. And there's not really much gold and silver in the world when you sort of compare it to the amount of financial assets. And if suddenly a move starts to you know, gets underway and a lot of this money and other assets starts moving towards gold and silver, I think the impact on the prices could be astounding. And I mean, as I think, as you know, I mean, they, this has been blunted in the short term by the action of the bullion banks and what have you have sold unbelievable amounts of paper, gold and silver, which has no backing whatsoever. There's no physical behind it. And I think that'll just add fuel to the fire when it, it gets underway, because most people are going to realize they've been hoodwinked in a Ponzi scheme. They don't own gold and silver when they have these paper products. All they own is a piece of paper saying it's gold and silver. So, I mean, there's just a lot of things that could go right for these two. And right now, uh, this is, I think, the best opportunity to get involved maybe ever. Now, you talk about how some people just own what's considered kind of paper gold and silver such as like ETFs and ex, you know exchange traded funds or futures or anything right what is your perspective on what kind of gold and silver people should own because you know there's a lot of options there's you know futures and those things but there's also mining stocks and there's also the physical metal what is your perspective uh, about what the best and safest options are well, it's three things. Obviously, the safest option option is physical gold and silver. 
not held in the banking system where it can be sort of hypothecated and rehypothecated. You might not have your gold even though you think you do. So I, I think that physical gold and silver in your possession or in an extremely safe uh, storage place uh, is number one. I mean, that's the basis for your portfolio. And I mean, where the re- and I think there are paper products like Sprott, for example, provides uh, Sprott Physical Gold and Trusted. All the gold and silver is there. I was just down at the Royal Canadian Mint last week. I saw it, so it, it, it's there, 100% backing the product. So there are some paper products that are backed. But uh, the other thing, where the leverage exists in the short run, if the, when the gold and silver prices start to move uh, dramatically to the upside, are the shares. Like the shares, to me, are extraordinarily cheap, even after the moves they've had since January. I mean, I've followed the shares, for, you know, for going on 45, 50 years, and at the bottom in January, I don't think they were ever cheaper in history in relation to the price of gold and silver. Now they've moved up a lot, but they've just undergoing a fairly significant correction here in the last month or two. And I think it's a wonderful entry point again, and I would encourage your listeners to take advantage of this because uh, uh, they're going to be very pleased when uh, down the road. Now, what is your perspective on gold versus silver? I know a lot of people have pointed out that the gold-silver ratio is actually, it seems, compared to what it historically has been, is completely out of whack right now. It's, you know, around 60 to 1. It takes around 60 ounces of silver to equal the value of one ounce of gold. But historically, it's been more like 15 or 10 to 1. Do you see us reverting back to that historical norm? Without question. I think what you're going to see, uh, and it always, it always, it's actually 70 to 1 right now to be exact. But the fact is, when you get into bull markets, uh, I think that silver just comes into its uh, own. And I, that's when you get these you know, declines in the gold-silver ratio from current elevated levels down to 10 or 15 to 1. So just for the sake of argument, uh, if this happens, say gold tripled, well, I mean, silver could go up tenfold. Yeah, that's very interesting. And one of the things that people might want to look out for is that also it seems like silver is more volatile than gold. So it might have a higher upside potential, but it's going to be a rough ride. Well, it has been a rough ride. Like, I mean, if you had have told me even two months ago that gold would be back trading just north of 17, I would say that would be impossible. But this is just testimony to the power of these bullion banks and what have you that can sell enormous amounts of unbacked silver paper. And this is what's happened. So I would say that, uh, you know, silver at $17 today or 17.30, wherever it is, is, is a spectacular buy. I think it's as cheap as it's ever been in history, and I can't encourage people enough to buy it. I mean, as you know, silver is called poor man's gold, and I mean, big money goes into gold because they can't get enough into silver. And But the fact is, when this thing gets rolling, then the money comes from everywhere, and silver will be the, the you know, destination for a lot of money, and it's going to, that's why the gold-silver ratio will fall significantly. Now, before we let you go, I was just going to end with a quote from you, and you can add to it if you'd like. You say that every day that life goes by and there's no disruption, I consider that a bonus. Did you want to expand on what you mean by that? Well, you know, that's that's, that's the old saying, Elijah, be careful what you wish for. I mean, we may get extremely wealthy uh, on, in, in gold and silver, but I think the social implications of what could happen if this debt pyramid collapses could be horrific. And uh, that's why I say, I mean, I'm, my attitude is very simply to enjoy every day because there's no guarantee that we're going to have this nice stability uh, that we've enjoyed for the last, well, the post-war era, really, uh, you know, ad infinitum. I think it could change dramatically if things went terribly wrong in the financial and economic world. And I think, unfortunately, that's exactly what's going to happen. All right. Well, John Embry, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers where they can find you and any last thoughts you'd like to add? Well, I, I didn't, no, I don't have to. I think I summed it up. But I mean, basically, just come to Sprott, www.sprott.com. There's all sorts of interesting stuff on our website. And, uh, you know, we, I think we probably have the best gold silver platform left in North America. So it's uh, I would encourage people, if they're interested in this subject, to get in touch with us. All right. Once again, thank you so much for your time today. Okay. My pleasure, Elijah.